I recently had to create a list of all the software I've been using at the old day job office. So I thought I'd share them with you here in the hopes that you'll find them as useful as I do. Now, I'm not going to be dumping the whole list on you. Instead, I'm going to break it up into types and get a couple of episodes out of it. <laughs> Since I mentioned Office, let's start there. Welcome to Blog Oklahoma. First off, I'm all into using Microsoft 365, also known as Microsoft Office. Word, Excel, OneDrive, and Outlook are invaluable for my day-to-day. -day. Unfortunately, some time ago, <laughs> Microsoft moved to a subscription model for Office, so there's a hefty yearly cost in using it. And I'm willing to pay for it. However, I do have an alternative that's just as good as Microsoft Office, but not nearly as costly and that is LibreOffice. LibreOffice is a free and open source office suite on par with Microsoft Office. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. LibreOffice Writer and Calc are the equal to Word and Excel. You can open many Microsoft Office documents in LibreOffice. I keep a copy of LibreOffice on my Linux laptop in case the mood strikes that I want to do some offline writing. Speaking of offline, you may consider using a cloud service like Google Workspace. Google Docs is quite usable, and I find Google Sheets very handy. However, all those documents are stored in the cloud. If your internet connection is not that reliable, you may just lose access to all those documents. I was big in the Google Docs. I would type up everything in there. I used to do all my podcast scripts in Google Docs. Then one day in the middle of a big project, <laughs> no internet. Somewhere a fiber optic line got cut and the internet was off for the entire day. From then on, I decided any important documents I may be working on are stored locally and offline. So I moved from Google Workspace to Microsoft Office for work and LibreOffice for personal. Later, I just completely switched to Microsoft 365 for everything. Now, this is nothing against using cloud services. <laughs> I use many cloud services. I'll mention a few in a moment. Um, I'll store and back up many of my documents on OneDrive, Dropbox, and even Google Drive. It's just when you're writing something like a podcast script, a novel, or an important client proposal, you don't want to be stopped because some Yahoo didn't call Oki before they dug. <laughs> All right, let's continue. You might have noticed I didn't mention OneNote in my Microsoft Office list a bit ago. I'm just not a fan of it. It's usable if it meets your needs, but it just wasn't for me. So I use Notion for taking notes. Notion is a very flexible and powerful tool for keeping notes organized. Notion is available on pretty much every platform, and you can use it for free, but it does have pro and team level tiers for extra features. Task management is a tool everyone needs for their Office toolkit. Microsoft To Do is an adequate task manager, but it just doesn't have the options I needed. So I use Todoist. I can literally say I use Todoist every day. It's multi platform and can be used for free. I pay for the pro tier, not only for the extra features, but I also want to support the developer. You can use Todoist for something as simple as a shopping list to a full-on prioritized and scheduled project management power tool. However, at the office, we've started using Trello for task and project management. It's also multi-platform and can be used for free, but also has pro and team level tiers. Now, if it was just me, I could keep all my projects in Todoist or even Notion. But since I'm part of a team, Trello has worked out much better. Trello is another one of those power tools that could be as simple or as complex as your tasks need. 
For just these last three tools, Notion, Todoist, and Trello, I could go way more in depth. And I might someday. For now, though, I'll let you explore them. Trust me, they're worth a look. Okay, next up is a calendar. Depending on your needs, almost any calendar will work. At the office, we use Google Calendar for office scheduling and Trello for project scheduling. For Blog Oklahoma, though, I needed something that could be used more publicly, so I settled on TeamUp. I've mentioned TeamUp before in a Blog Oklahoma bonus episode. I love it. It's easy to use and share. It's great for teams. I will always recommend TeamUp. Now that said, for my day-to-day calendar, well, this one's a bit different. I could be using Outlook Calendar, which is fine, Google Calendar, which is perfectly usable, or even TeamUp. However, the one I just am um, all into right now is Fantastical. I've imported all my calendars from Google, Microsoft, iCloud, Trello, and even TeamUp into Fantastical. I've attached Todoist to it so I could see all my scheduled tasks in one place and even check them off as I finish them. Now, the only downside to Fantastical is it's Apple only. You can use it on a Mac, iPad, or iPhone. No Windows app. But since I have a Mac at the office as my secondary workstation, I leave Fantastical open all day. The last app we'll go over, you might not consider as an office app and more of a graphics app. If you ever need to create a brochure, a flyer, an infographic, a business card, or a quick sign that says, turn off the damn coffee pot before you leave, Canva is your tool. You can use Canva in your browser or from an iOS or Android app. It's free to use, but they do have a pro tier. It's worth paying for. This is another one of those services we can spend an entire episode on. So I invite you just to open it up and make a quick image for your next social media post. You'll fall in love with Canva and discover why it'll be an invaluable tool for your office day-to-day needs. Well, that's enough for now. Hopefully you'll find these apps as useful as I do. Everyone has different office needs. Your needs could be met by using Apple apps like Pages, Numbers, and Keynote. You can be an open source person and work entirely inside of Nextcloud. Or you could be using really old equipment and WordPerfect and Lotus 123 are your jam. Heck, I even use Notepad as part of my office toolkit, and I'm pretty sure I could find a disk with PC Write on it somewhere in my library. I'll have links to everything I've mentioned in the show notes, so please check them out. And let us know what your go-to office apps are. I'll have a discussion thread up on the Blog Oklahoma subreddit. As a reminder, we're in an election year here in Oklahoma. The general primary election is Tuesday, June 28, 2022. If you're not registered to vote yet, you only have until June 3rd to get registered. Oklahoma has a closed primary system. That means only people registered Republican, Democrat, or Libertarian can vote in their respective primaries. The Democratic Party, however, has invited independents to vote in their primary. So if you're registered independent, you can still vote in this primary election. If there are any runoffs from this primary, those will be held on August 23rd. And the general election, where everyone needs to go vote, is November 8th. For more information on this election and how to register to vote, please visit the Oklahoma State Elections Board at oklahoma.gov elections. Have you subscribed to the Blog Oklahoma newsletter yet? It's a simple little newsletter I put together each week to share some news, videos, and music you might enjoy, or at least find interesting. I also shared little tidbits of what's happening behind the scenes here at Blog Oklahoma or my life in general. The newsletter comes out on Mondays for subscribers and on Wednesdays for everyone to read on our blog. Newsletter subscribers also will get bonus material just for them. For example, they got a preview of this very podcast as I was still writing it. So if you're interested in subscribing, please visit blogoklahoma.com slash newsletter. Did you know we have our own cafe press store? (laughs) There you could purchase a t-shirt, coffee mug, and other great items with the Blog Oklahoma podcast artwork on them. 
So please head on over to cafepress.com slash blog Oklahoma podcast. I've added even more great music to the Blog Oklahoma bonus playlist on Spotify. There are many, many, many hours of music for you to enjoy. I'll have links to this and more in the show notes at blogoklahoma.net. And as always, thank you for listening to the Blog Oklahoma podcast. Your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. I encourage you to share your thoughts on the subreddit or join the community on Discord. You can connect with me at Mastodon or send me an email at blogoklahoma at blogoklahoma.net. And finally, please feel free to sign up for the newsletter for even more bonus content. Check our show notes for all the links from today's episode. The Blog Oklahoma podcast episodes are released under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike license. This episode was recorded on May 8th, 2022, in front of a live teddy bear audience in beautiful, just off downtown Elk City, Oklahoma. This has been Kevin Latham for Blog Oklahoma. Until next time. (laughs) 